I see an icon. Okay, we are now we are now on um, YouTube. Sorry for that delay. Good to go. Okay. Roll call, please. Aona. Present. Bethia. Present. Martinez. Present. McDill. Present. Now move on to the approval of commission minutes from our our committee meeting on September 2023. Um, does any commissioner have any comments on the last meeting's minutes? Okay. If not, may we have a motion to approve the minutes um, of September 2023? I'll make a motion to approve. Commissioner Wait. Bethia seconds. A roll call for that approval. Aona? Aye. Bethia? Aye. Martinez? Aye. McDill? Aye. Thank you. For correspondence, do we have any correspondence? Uh, the commissioners received correspondence from Bible Center Church, Homewood Community Sports, and Neighborhood Allies. Uh, that was it. Okay. Do we have any public comment? there is any public comment that is not related to an item on the agenda, um, this would be the time for anyone to use the raise hand function in the chat. I do not see any, and I did not receive any uh, additional public comment. There are no briefing items on today's agenda. So we will be moving on to hearing and action. And so I will be recusing myself from this portion of the agenda and I will return at the conclusion of motions for the director's report. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Bethia, uh, as um, the uh, most senior commissioner in terms of appointment date, um, will be the acting chair as needed during this review. Yes, yeah, so we are moving on to an action item on the Homewood Public Art Project. And we would need to know if there are any comments coming from the artists. The artists for the project are Mikhail Auna, which is why he has rec recused himself, uh, Juliandra Jones, uh, Nigel Moon, and Cameron Nesbitt. Yeah, I am going to, we're going to promote the artist right now, uh, share uh, a presentation, and each artist will be describing their uh, So One moment to get this all set up. Kevin, can you let me know when all of the artists are in? That should be a second or two. And as the artists um, enter and become panelists, if you could do a quick sound check um, before we present, that'd be great. Thank you. That's one, two, three. Confirmed. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Easy, how are you feeling? Thank you. Okay, it looks like we have them all. Um, 
So we will uh, go over, uh, I have a few materials that each artist has submitted. Um, each artist is going to go through, see the court reporter has a question. Uh, Sherry, is there, is there a question? We can see, yeah, see you're unmuted, but we're not hearing anything. Okay. Um, I'm going to, um, we'll be going through each artist, uh, each artist when you, uh, again, your, um, summary of your project, you know, you can go for few minutes, five minutes, if you like, please just introduce yourself and uh, I can scroll back and forth through the um, materials that you've submitted. Uh, a quick um, sub, uh, material to view for all the projects is here, which kind of outlines where each one is, uh, the proposed project is in, uh, in relation to the field. So moving forward, the first artist that will be describing their project is Cameron Nesbitt. Okay. Yeah, yeah and, the, and the reporter just wanted to make sure that everyone introduces themselves um, as they speak. So if each artist can do that, thank you. Uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, my name is Cameron, Cameron Nesbitt, a uh, multidisciplinary artist from Pittsburgh. i uh, really excited to you know, um, contribute to this portion of this project for the Humble Field. Um, here we have a a diagram or, you know, basically a, a projected sketch of, you know, the, the sculpture that I would like to do. It'll be about five foot tall, um, and it will represent the pride of the Humble Bulldogs and this stance and realty that they've had over the years and to the years to come. Um, below, where um, Tony is shown is a description of how the statue will be drilled into the ground um, and it's, it's going to be located against well towards the exit of the tunnel where um, each team will come out you know to celebrate and uh, you know come out to be ready to play um, that, some of that information is just explaining the, the pedestals and uh, the gold chains that are on the statue uh, um, where that big black X is is where the projected placement of the statue will be And um, that pretty much sums up the gist of uh, the project I'm proposing for um, the Humboldt Football Field. Are there any comments from the commissioner commissioners on this portion? Um, Commissioner Bithia, will um, as this is sort of being presented as one project, we'll we'll go through each artist. Um, if it's okay, and then we'll enter into discussion and that'll be um, fine thank you thank you so we will next uh juliandra jones hello my name is juliandra jones um also go by pbj customs i'm a multidisciplinary artist i'm here in pittsburgh um do anything from murals and sculptures um, so my idea for this is going to be along the pathway. So from both sides coming from the street and from the parking lot. And it's uh, going to be stamped into the concrete. So it's like an imprint of bulldog uh, paw prints. And they're going to stop before they get to that statue that um, Cameron Nesbitt is going to be doing. Um, I have talked with Homo Community Sports, and uh, we're going to make sure that the paw prints don't come out too much for the players that are running into the field, don't want to have any hazards with their cleats or anything like that. Um, and then um, I have received letters of community support. I've just received another one today from Homewood Children's Village in support of this project. Um, and yeah, basically that's the gist, just uh, making a stamp basically signifying that we're going to be there um, 
for the foreseeable future. Thank you. And the next artist is Mikkel Awuna. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Mikkel Awuna, and I'm very excited to share with you all my proposal um, in conjunction with my great colleagues for my new artwork in the Homewood Park. Um, and so just to provide a bit of context and background on myself, um, I was born and raised in Pittsburgh East End, and I've been working with the community of Homewood throughout my professional career as an artist. I've created public artwork in Homewood. Um, this is included right around the corner from the new Homewood Park at Everyday Cafe. I had an amazing opportunity to create public art installations of works from my Infinite Essence collection that are currently on view in front windows of the cafe. And so these pieces were specifically selected to emanate protection and fertility for the patrons and the neighborhood. I have also worked with Bible Center Church's Makers Clubhouse to conduct science, technology, engineering, art, and math workshops for middle school students in Homewood. And I've also conducted and led town hall conversations at Everyday Cafe, including one in 2021 in, rec in honor of Juneteenth, recognizing Juneteenth as um, for the first time and also Black art in Pittsburgh. And so the public art installation that I've been doing is really a continuation of this work. Um, it's the piece that you see here. It will span 36 feet in width and reach 11 feet and about four inches in height. Um, and it will be a vinyl mural installation that will, that will be facing towards the amphitheater. Um, where you'll have also a lot of, in the park, there will be a lot of the performing arts organizations, for example, like Legacy Arts might be performing in the amphitheater space. And so um, the design was specifically chosen as a celebration of hope, community, love, and the rich cultural legacy that the residents of Homewood share. And at its core, as you saw above, there's um, there are four figures that are depicted that are larger than life, with each of their faces adorned in stars and their eyes illuminated with hope and dreams. And so as they collectively gaze towards the top right, this is really a symbol, a symbol of optimism and forward movement. Um, and their hands are gently rested on their cheeks embodying contemplation and unity. And so as you, the background was specifically chosen, um, it includes um, a pre-colonial writing system from Southeastern Nigeria known as Insibidi. And these symbols were chosen with intentionality and the meaning of them represents um, love, community and the representation of a young man and woman building a home together. And so by juxtaposing these ancient symbols with the forward looking gaze of the figures, the piece that I proposed is really meant to convey the narrative that as we honor and draw strength from our ancestors, we look to the future with hope and aspirations. And so I'm excited for this work um, to hopefully join the community and the new park alongside the work of my artistic colleagues. And I look forward to our conversation today. Okay, and then Naja Moon. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> Um, my name is Naja Moon. Um, I guess a little bit of background about myself. I'm originally from Durham, Durham North Carolina, but I'm currently based in Miami. Um, I use drawing and text and sound to explore the intersections of queer identity, the body and movement, Black culture, and familiar relations, uh, personal and communal. Um, I'm a preacher's kid and daughter of musicians, raised on gospel music and HBCUs. And before I committed to being a full-time artist, I was a basketball player who used to be a kid who wanted to be an artist. So my art practice in some ways has also been about probing those intersections. Um, and I think a lot of that is why I feel so connected to this project. Um, I'm a person who uses the public park system to keep playing the game that I love and to build and maintain community. Um, I see the impact that it has not only on our youth, um, to have a place to train and play, but it's also one of the few places where I experience intergenerational joy, something that I think my generation and older uh, experienced in places of worship. Um, and I love to acknowledge how sport can, um, can kind of be the place where that energy has migrated to. 
uh, and and that's kind of what I wanted to hone in on with this project. Um, I'm trying to I'm following my notes. So syllogism is a text based work integrated into the chain link fencing surrounding Homewood Park. The term was prompted by the composition of the same name by Mary Lou Williams. And I see the work not only as like an aesthetic contribution to the park, but also a wayfinding um, to the shrine that is the field. Um, so I use the device of a syllogism to write a poem. Uh, the poem goes, there is joy on the field. The shrine holds joy. Therefore, the shrine is on the field. And so the poem takes cues from signage that I found in a Teeny Harris photo in the archives, um, which I think there's a, an image of that, that photo. Um, but essentially my aim is to present the text in a directional kind of gestural typography that's reminiscent of my mark making and uses marks that I collect from, from players on the field. So it, the aesthetic of the work is 100% derived from what people, from a, from a, I guess like a public input, a process. Um, thank you for pulling that up. So in these photos, you'll see here a long exposure photography project that I did where I'm kind of dancing to gospel music that I love. And these are the marks that I left behind. And so I have this vision of working with Homewood Community Sports to get young people on the field running football routes or passing the ball to each other and collecting the remnants of that play and using those marks to kind of design a typography to, uh, to ultimately make this text. Um, yeah, and that's, that's the plan. Um, these are some install references for, for how the, the work will be uh, attached to the fencing. And yeah, I think that covers it. It's not a Commissioner Bethia, um, free to uh, introduce discussion. Um, okay, um, thank you. Uh, Commissioner, so is there any discussion or comment on the presentation? No questions or thoughts? Yes, Commissioner Bethia, I, I do have one. I was trying to find a raise my hand. Ah. Okay, Shonda, Commissioner McGill, please. Yes, I just want to thank the artist for the diversity of style and thought um, and the uniqueness of each aspect that was presented. It's all very unique and all reflects different, um, an intersectionality of its own. Um, I know um, that we were speaking of that, but each um, one coming together on the field also represents a different level of intersectionality um, as well. And so I think I had a few just general um, questions. I think when I think about things going into community, um, I don't know if it was Nadja who mentioned it. No, it was Julian, trying to find her name. Juliandra, yes. Juliandra mentioned uh, the permanence of it. Like, you know, we want to make the, that we want to state that we are here um, for an extended period of time. So I do wonder about the, um, you know, in the, in terms of the materials and the vinyl, like what is the thought in terms of how long it's, you know, the, the care for it over time and um, and how that will be maintained? is really my question. Um, but but generally, thank you for your contributions. And I really ap appreciated listening to the process by which you came to your, um, the manifestation of the creativity. Are any of the um, artists able to answer that specific question? Uh, I can. Uh, this is Juliandra. Um, as for this portion on the walkway so the designs will actually be stamped into the concrete so it'll go in about one fourth of an inch um in depth so you basically treat it how you would uh, the sidewalk so if you're power washing the sidewalk it's, it's just the same thing so it's actually imprinted into the concrete thank you juliandra I'll add in terms of the um, vinyl mural installation that I've created that I'm, ho I'm hoping to create the piece will be affixed onto the side of the 
um, field house. And so actually it would be the vinyl will be applied to the um, the brick that we that we that will be included in the, there. And then that has a rating of seven years with minimal fading. The plan is to then also share the digital image with DPW for them to then use the digital image for maintenance and replacement in the longer term as well. And so they'll also use that as references for the specific colors. I mean, in the, and then they can also potentially use it for you know, other types of maintenance applications as they as over the course of the life of the artwork. Thank you. Are there any other comments from commissioners? Comments or questions? Um, actually, while we're waiting to see if anyone else has anything to say, I also wanted to point out that I really enjoyed that there's a mix of mediums for this project. I think it's going to make it very, very interesting collectively. Any other commissioner uh, thoughts or questions? Yes. Yeah. Question? There's a hand uh, raised. Director Hornstein, you can um, yes. speak as you like. Yeah, I too wanted to thank all of the artists. Um, I, I did have a, a specific question, um, you know, for Naja, um, because it wasn't um, readily apparent in her application. But I was, I was just hoping if you could talk a little bit um, to everyone here about, you know, your process that you've used for community engagement and how you um, are hoping to, you know, continue that as part of your work. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I think I spoke on it a little bit on the slides where there were examples of like my long exposure photography um, for this project in particular. Thank you. Um, I I wanted to work with Homewood Community Sports to gather some of the, the young people who are in the program, whether they play football, but also uh, thinking about the cheerleaders um, that that we saw when we visited last summer um, and get them in the practice of doing what they would normally do on the field. Um, and then having different light elements attached to either parts of their body or the pom poms or the football and that and I can take long exposure photographs, it would have to be in the evening, you know, as little light as possible. Um, but taking these long exposure photographs of them just being in their regular practice. Uh, and then I could use those marks as a foundation to build a typeset that would be the font that the that this poem is installed with. I don't know if that provides more clarity. But yeah, it'd be a, a, a nighttime activity. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That does. Um, you know, within the installation, um, <clears throat> excuse me, within the installation, is there anything else, um, any other community engagement that you plan to have um, beyond just the, um, you know, the helping you kind of, um, as you said, like, define the typology and typography um, that's kind of unique to this community um, in the in the work there. I, did, I just didn't know if there was any other plans for further follow on community engagement beyond the, the long form um, exposure photography. I hadn't thought of anything in, in particular, but I'm definitely open to it. Um, my experience there last summer was really dope. Um, the first thing I did when I got in town was I bought a basketball and I played basketball with some kids at the Y around the corner every day. Um, and I've, I've stayed in touch with them. I'm a hooper, not a football player. So like, that's kind of my, my comfort zone. Um, but yeah, like I'm a person that goes to the park every day, I would love to think of ways to spend more time in the community playing, um, but but as as it relates to this project in particular, this is what I had started to map out as a way to make sure the work directly reflects the people who are using the space. Okay, any other further comment from commissioners? And uh, Commissioner Bethia, I can whenever it's appropriate, I, we can introduce the public comment. Yes, that was my next thing on my agenda. Um, 
If everyone is done with uh, commissioner comments, do we have any public comments? Uh, I'm going to uh, go through in the order that I see raised hands appear. Uh, if you want to, okay. anyone wants to give a public comment, you can use the raise hand function. Uh, when I call you, please introduce yourself for the record and comment is limited to three minutes. So I will tell you when that time is up. Um, the first uh, raised hand is uh, only says Zoom user. Um, so I'm going to unmute you here and please uh, introduce yourself. And when you begin talking, you have three minutes. Um, how you doing? My name is Ayo Deji Young. I'm vice president of Homewood Community Sports. Um, also a member of the Homewood community. I live in Homewood as well. Um, been participating, working, and living in the Homewood area for the last 35 years. Uh, so um, I'm happy to see that the stadium is getting done. And I'm um, happy that we have uh, great willing artists that are um, donating their time and energy to putting up um, fantastic pieces of art on our uh, on on our playing field and, and new facility. I'm very appreciative of that. Um, out of all of the uh, uh, art projects that I've seen, um, the 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 they all catch my eye for different things. Um, the bulldog uh, the bulldog statue is unbelievable. That that that's like something that. I could see that being a source of pride and uh and um and love on a daily basis from our kids and members of the community coming to use uh that field, actually touching it and rubbing on it for good luck on our way out to beat somebody up. So that uh I could see that becoming a, a quick tradition of ours. Uh walking the path of the uh bulldog footprints. I, I love that in the first presentation. Um, all in all, and, and even the uh, the gate, the things put on the gate, uh, uh, and the poem that the uh, the young the young artist did, I I like all of those. Um, my question was for the uh, was for the the mural with the uh fourth with the five faces. Um, could could you possibly pull back up uh, that? drawing and the location in which that is going to go. Um, I had some questions about that. So um, that, correct me if I'm wrong, that is the amp the amphitheater, correct? Facing, uh, facing, that's the amphitheater, facing the park, correct? We can't really do a question and answer back and forth. Okay, okay, okay. It, but if you want to list okay. all no, no, of no, your no, no. points, that's fine. That's fine. That's, I can I can see it better. I just pulled it up to see it better and see exactly what it's facing. So you don't have to answer. Okay, so the um that that location. My only hesitancy with that, and I want to be respectful of the artist because I understand that process, and and you know. We're all sensitive about our art. I'm an artist on some level as well when it comes to music, and we're all sensitive when it comes to our art. My critique of that particular piece is I like the message and I like what it sends, the message that it sends and the story behind it and, and the work that he actually put in to come up with the messaging that goes behind the picture. But my, the stance that I said at a previous meeting that we had is one that I'll stick by, which is... Um, this is a football field and what we're going for on a football field and what we want to give out and what we want to exude is the total kind of opposite of, of the energy that the picture has when you first look at it. It's three. So, yeah, we need you to, I need to wrap up this. Comment. All right. So just looking at the picture, I don't think that the picture actually fits. I know the story, but I don't think it fits. Okay with what exactly it is we want with Homewood Field. You? Sorry, I have to- Okay, thank you. Can the that... three minutes officially. Uh, uh, the next commenter I have is Dominique. Dominique, you can introduce yourself uh, and have three minutes. 
Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dominique Swift, and I work with uh, Homewood Children's Village. I've been working with them for four years as the communications coordinator, and I really just would like to speak a little bit on Michaela Wuna's work, the one with the mural as well, um, because I still remember the first time I saw his work in person. I was actually uh, walking past Everyday Cafe, and I saw an image um, from the Infinite Essence series. And I still just remember being awestruck, like as a black woman seeing characters that resembled features like mine and like my brothers and like my family and like members in Homewood was just so impactful to see powerful black people that were luminescent otherworldly in a predominantly black neighborhood, I think is a statement on its own. And I can't help but wonder when I see work like Mikkel's about what the world will be like if we all got to see ourselves that way and what the world would be like if we were surrounded by art and images and media that kind of push back on that idea that black people are targets of that physical and emotional violence and see us as beings that have this infinite potential that anything can come from. So I think that's beauty in its own. And I think that also should be displayed in an athletic area because it kind of expands what that arena is and it opens up for curiosity even if you don't understand it as soon as you see it is not as plain of an image not in terms of boring but it's not easily understood by anyone but it does drive that curiosity that encourages open dialogue and conversations in our community, which I think is absolutely necessary for improvement in our co community and progression in our community. Um, um, it, it, it makes us think about where we come from, where it come from, where it comes from and why it's here. And I think we could all benefit from talking to each other more. So if putting Mikkel's work up means that there's an opportunity for just one more person like me walking around Homewood to feel seen, and represented and embraced and empowered, then I think it has an infinite potential to do good no matter what area it's in, but especially in an area where you might not expect it to be, which is the athletic field, even if it is facing the amphitheater. I think it kind of expands people's horizons and I think it's necessary in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Dominique. Okay, you. Uh, the next um, commenter I have, I just have a uh, swamp monster. Um, so if you could introduce yourself, and then you will also have three minutes. You should be able to unmute. Again, the name I'm seeing is swamp monster. I don't want to dentist office, but I agree with the. I don't agree with that picture that's on there right now. I'm getting my teeth full right now. There, can you can you introduce picture. yourself? My name is Swamp Monster. I don't uh, agree with that picture. Right, the only thing I agree with is the footprints and the bulldog. But I'm getting my teeth full, so I got to hang up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we, we thank Swamp Monster for their comments. Uh, Is that it for public uh, comments or are there further ones? No, I have a few more. Um, okay, thank you. Next one up is, uh, looks like John McDonald. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so my name is John McDonald. I'm with the King's Kids Foundation and Youth for Christ. Um, I also live in the Homewood area. So I was here in person whenever we went over all of this. So I'm just going to uh, speak on what I spoke on last time. Uh, this mural, if you can go back down, please. That mural um, outside of an athletic facility, let alone a community that has a deep history of addiction, depression, violence, um, when I look at it, it doesn't necessarily give the hope that I know the artists wanted to give it, especially when it's outside of a playground where there's going to be hundreds of kids 
uh, throughout the years who will see this, it's it's not the greatest thing of hope, especially if they're in the community that they're in. Now, that's just with the athletic facility. Uh, but if I'm just a tourist riding through Homewood, I'm not going to experience the Homewood that we desire it to be one of love, one of kindness, one of hope, one of honor, one of respect, one of unity. Because we already deal in the world with a bunch of uh, depression, anxiety, suicide. So when I just drive past, even just on a tourist aspect, even if I'm coming in town for the holidays to see my family who lives in Homewood, it just carries on the stereotypical, oh, this is a depressed place, even with it being black. Like this, like it just doesn't give where Homewood is going. And especially, like I said, when you talk about sports, it doesn't necessarily even match with that uh, vibe of, of the tenacity and, and the, the unity, teamwork, just passion that sports would have. Because it really would take my mood down. Because I'm a former D1 athlete. I went to Indiana State and played football. If that was outside of my place that I played football, it would definitely take me from a 10 to like a 3 because it looks very depressing. Now, I'm not knocking the artist. I honestly love it. But when you talk about it being located particularly in this area, where it's located, who's going to see it, I don't think it's the wisest or the, the best situation for the community and even for the future. Thank you for y'all's time. Yeah, thank you. Um, next, I have Chad. How you doing, everyone? My name is Chad Parker. I'm a member of um, Homewood Community Sports and Homewood Community Just Period. Um, I, I coach down there. I grew up down there my whole life. Um, I know the culture of the community, of what the sports brings to the community. I know how important it is for this project to go forward. And uh, first of all, we want to say we want to thank all the artists for working timelessly on this project. Um, the art pieces are beautiful. We love them. But like the previous member said, we don't think that those uh, pieces of art in particular go good in the area that they're in. Um, they're fantastic pieces of art, but we need something more motivating and more sports related to, to push our children up and bring them up. Um, everyone's motivated by different things. Our area and our culture of Homewood community is motivated by sports. And that's something that our kids pride themselves on. And I think them and the community at large would benefit more from seeing a more Homewood culture mural as the first thing they're seeing once they approach the field. Uh, I think those are the things that we should move forward to and listen to the actual members of the community who grew up there and serve that community and know what the community wants and know the culture of the community as well. Uh, that's all I got to say. Thank you, guys. Okay, were there any other further uh, public comments? Yeah, we have a we have a few lined up. Oh, here. I'm sorry. I could continue I'll... on. <laughs> Just let me know when we've con concluded them. I I absolutely will. Um, let's see here. I have the name. It says executed in Excel. Uh, you can introduce yourself. In your three minutes. Hello, everyone. My name is Michelle Stewart. I, my consulting and the work that I do on the side is with Execute and Excel Lens. Um, but outside of that, my name again is Michelle Stewart. I am born and raised in the Homewood community. Um, I have also been a part of Homewood Community Sports prior to it being the Bulldogs when it was the Stingers. I was born, raised, bred, and it mentored, coached, um, loved, and the, am the person I am today because of Homewood Community Sports. Um, I was also one of the people, like I believe John mentioned, who was physically at the first meeting. Um, and what I am frustrated with right now and what I am going to be looking further into at the end of this meeting is the fact that this is still being pushed forward when at the physical meeting that was held at the Homewood CEA, uh, with Brother Rashad, 100% of the people who were there when you all shared this 
voice the same thing that is being voiced now, had the same concerns, had the same reservations. We all shared that the artwork is beautiful, but that it is not appropriate for the culture, um, the relevancy, the community, the children, the work that Homewood Community Sports currently does, has done, and that they are going to grow and excel in doing with doing more work in schools and larger communities and laying the blueprint for what community sports is. So my frustration right now is I don't know if his name is Michael. I am going to be sure to get who this person is, who is over this project. Um, one of the frustrations with community work is that we pull people from the outside based on their position, their title, their assumed qualifications, their assumed education, and we put them over something that they do not have a clue in what they are being put over. This is legacy. This is history. This is family. This is culture. This is something that even if it was to move forward, there would be such a outcry, a protest, and a lie rebellion that would take place that could simply be avoided if the voices of the people are to actually be heard and then what is being stated is applied. I appreciate the lady who keeps coming on and saying are we done yet? Are we done yet? Because of course we have to move forward and time matters. I'm here to pick up my kings um, from school, but this is not okay. Um, and the fact that it is here and we are again saying this is not okay, is not okay. So I am going to make sure that I reach out to not only Mayor Ed Ganey, but everyone else in a public petition and cry to make sure that what we are saying is not just heard and documented for the sake of being heard and documented because it feels like there is a political agenda or a behind the scenes agenda when we are saying, Mikhail, we love your artwork and it is beautiful downtown and it is beautiful in these places that you have been provided with grants and funds to put it. However, for what you are trying to do by putting somber African figures in a vibrant community where we want our, ch our children are already somber. They go to school and they're somber because they're not getting quality education. Their parents are somber because they don't have the resources they need. They're somber because their yeah, peers are getting killed. Excuse me. Let me finish I'm going to have thing, to ask you to wrap up. Thank you. I'm going to wrap up and I want to be very clear as I wrap up that this is not the end and that it is not okay. And then to ask someone who is sharing as a Homewood citizen resident and who is explaining this is our heart, our community and legacy to cut them off and ask them to wrap up further confirms that you are the problem. So I will be sure to reach out to Mayor Ed Ganey and everyone else who oversees you and ensuring this does not get moved forward. Have a great day. Okay, this is Commissioner Bethia. Thank you for your passion. Um, first of all, I want to make it clear on the record that my question as to whether the questions were over was simply because I have not attended a commission meeting that has had so many comments. And so quite truthfully, usually there's one or two. So that was merely that not to push it forward, to push you out of the conversation but more so because I'm actually quite surprised that there are, you know, so many comments that, that people have. And that's always a good thing. We usually don't get enough comments from folks. So I think I speak for all the commissioners when I say it's good to hear the public comment. Do not, you know, misconstrue our, our wanting to move things along. However, we do, uh, and we do have a schedule. So we do have to respect that as well. We want to respect you, but we also have to respect our time. So, um, uh, yeah. Please continue uh, staff, uh, Tony, with anything that else that needs to go forward. If we have any other comments or whatever. I, I have a few. Um, I, I, please continue. I, I, and I do apologize to anyone who, uh, you know, that that this this is a, a forum where we are asked to limit comments to three minutes. I There's not much I can, I can do about that. So I do apologize for that. Uh, let's see here. The next name I have is Mark. Mark Marcus. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? I can. We Please can. Thank you. And again, three minutes. I, I perfect. Off, yes, I, I am speaking in strong support of Michael Awuna's mural. I believe it is avant garde. I believe it's groundbreaking, and I believe it will bring a great light to the area where it will be installed. Um, just to respond to some of the previous comments that I heard, uh, just is odd to me because there are more people that use Homewood Park other than the sports team. Um, the sports aspect of Homewood Park is certainly important and historical and should be um, taken with all seriousness. And there are pieces that speak to that element of the park. 
I do not understand why um, there would be no concern for other people who are not athletes who also have just as much of a right to use Homewood Park and to be represented. Um, the main thing is that the art in question is not even on the football field or even facing the football field. It's actually facing the amphitheater where other arts groups will be performing, where other communities will be using for artistic programming. Um, communities that Mikhail has worked with extensively in the past and who would also be excited to have that work featured. Um, I believe that um, the work is a great, would be a great addition to um, not only the community, but to the wider city at large. And for, I know I heard a comment earlier about tourists through Homewood, but if anything, I think this mural would have the potential to bring more tourists to Homewood, particularly to see that work and to see the area that it is would be um, living in. Um, we all know, I mean, Mikhail's work has been exhibited not just across Pittsburgh. I mean, it could be seen downtown, um, on Heinz Hall, Andy Warhol Museum, billboards on Highway 28, but also across the U.S. and the world. And I think having that kind of national, citywide and international attention would actually in the long run be um, in home was best interest and would help elevate all of the other things that are happening in the community and neighborhood as well. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And then uh, I have Derek Tillman. Derek, you can, you should be able to unmute. Yes. Um, so my name is Derek Tillman. Uh, I have supported this project and supported the uh, Homewood uh, Community Sports Group really since the beginning. Um, Bark, uh, Ishmaeli, President of Homewood Community Sports, uh, myself, we are both alumni of uh, Westinghouse High School and um, really do see this project uh, as, you know, bigger than sports, you know, really impacting the entire community. Um, Mubarak has really led this project since the beginning. Um, there was there was not support for this project. Uh, he, you know, was was really the main leader to get the support to have this project financed. Um, and and that organization has been doing work there for over sixty years. So I think it's 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 very important to recognize that this is not like any other. Um, project, you know, that is just a public, you know, project. This is, th th there's a heart, there's an organization that has been doing work for free, volunteering, generations. There is a legacy that is connected to this that if, if it is not respected, will really be disrespectful to, to, to proceed and not understand how the legacy, the culture, the heritage, the work, the blood, sweat, and tears of generations have 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 gone, and and how that directly connects uh, with 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 what happens here and the culture and 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 art that is represented. I think it's been uh, communicated. We all believe we've seen Mikhail's work in other places and spaces, and do believe that his work is amazing. Um, how, however, I think anyone that doesn't recognize this is not all art is uh, relevant to every space. There's some things that it's just not appropriate to put here. There's other that would be great, you know, in in an arts district downtown or somewhere, but maybe not here. Uh, I agree that not all the art needs to represent just sports. Um, but I do think that it does need to be representative and responsive to the uh, the, the culture, the heritage, and the community of of you know that that it that it that it is representing. One thing um, that these specific pieces, at least, at least the first two um, you know uh, pictures, to me, it kind of looks like blackface, and um, I I think. Uh, that's, you know, I'm not the only person that said that. Somebody else said that. And when you really think about an African-American community, um, that's the last thing that you want to see. I, I don't think the last there, two... That's three minutes, if you can... Okay, I'll, I'll end in okay. 10 seconds. I don't think the last two does, but the first two, I think it kind of somewhat looks like that. Um, 
so 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 you're hearing this communication, this outcry that we you think did. this is great, but just not at this specific location. Thank you. Next commenter is Ajani. Hello, my name is Ajani Zanea Powell. You can call me Aji, preferably. I am the Advocacy and Communication Associate at the Greater Pittsburgh Arts Council, and I'm also the Media Literacy Fellow at One Hood Media. Um, I mainly wanted to comment on several things that I've heard and my overall concern. Um, the first thing was the fact that someone stated that this is bigger than sports. And although I do agree, um, it is important to consider the, the location and the history um, of where we are putting the artwork. Yes, it is going to be forward facing to other arts organizations, but I think it's important to recognize and understand that all work, all artwork is valid here. And so whether that's reflective of sports or not, it's still art. Um, the next thing that I wanna comment on is the national slash citywide attention that the artist was said to bring Homewood. Um, although that is wonderful and great, this is an opportunity to provide opportunity to provide space for more artists, um, especially those reflective of the community and preserving the community heritage and culture has obviously been important and relevant to the community members. And the last thing that I mostly wanted to comment on was um, my concern of engaging the youth that will be using this area um, although we get the opportunity to sit here in these meetings, the youth that will be using this space is not present. And I, I hope that there's going to be a conversation that allows them to control their narrative and uplift their voices. Because oftentimes we talk about allowing the people to choose um, what is uplifting and empowering to them and that they get to be the in the forefront of what their community looks like. And given that this is a community center, I would hope that those using it will get to have that say. Thank you. Thank you. And I have Mubarak. You should be able to unmute Mubarak. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Mubarak, known as Coach Mu. I'm the president of Homewood Community Sports. Um, I want to thank the Art Commission for having this uh, meeting so that our, our people can be heard. Um, I want to thank all the artists um, who do phenomenal work. Um, Camel, phenomenal work. Juliandra, Naja, Michael, you guys do phenomenal work. Um, our organization has been intertwined with that space for over 50 years. Um, the gentleman spoke about it's not just football. It's not just football, but Homewood is just a football neighborhood. That's number one. From Westinghouse down to Homewood, back in the back in the sixties, football is the centerpiece. It's the mecca of the community where the kids are. We have all types of kids because uh, this is how I know people don't come to the community. Because if you ever came up there, yeah, we have the athletes, but then it's the kids in the community, they're part of Homewood Community Sports as well. Even though the organization is a sports organization, we open our arms to all the kids in the community. To, to the lady that just spoke, eight years ago, when we were when we started pushing this project, it was the youth who designed the project. Their input is what we came with. I've been community engaging for eight years. We've been doing this a lot. It, my, I, I love Michael's work, but for this project, I just doesn't. I don't think it's a right fit. Like, and I hate to say that because he's an excellent artist, and I wish we could have did this a different way. Because I don't want him to feel like no one likes his work. It's just for this site, it's not. A, it's it's not good. Um, it, it doesn't represent what we want represented down there. Like we we created this space, we designed this space, we designed that the amphitheater for the community for jazz on the steps. We took all of this in consideration because we were engaging with the community for eight years. So 
now people come in and they say this, that, and the third. When I'm like, we were discussing this with organizations, leaders in the community, kids in the community, residents in the community for eight years to come up with this. So our vision is, I feel like it should be respected because we're going to be here and we're not going nowhere. And we are intertwined with the space. So there's no us without that space. There's no space without us. So I just want y'all to be considerate of the people within my organization who have trusted me to lead the way because they tell me what they want and I'm the messenger. But it just seems like the message is, isn't coming across right. Um, I hope it does. I hope we can continue to build and work with these artists so that we can present the best project in the nation because I think this has the ability to be that. I yield my time. Thank you. And uh, that is the end of the comment. I'm speechless. Um, <laughs> I guess my first thought is, of course, Mikhail, it sounds like you are very well respected. And I think that the community was very fortunate to draw you as an artist. But I would just like to have an opportunity very quickly for the commissioners for any follow up questions. Um, one of the first ones of mine being back to you, Mikhail, is because there is seem, seems to be some pushback from the community. Can you please explain a little bit what your process was and, um, you know, in engaging and becoming the artist for this project and what some of the what you were getting during the meeting? Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, community meetings. Thank you. Absolutely. Happy to. And um, I think one of the great things about art is that it provokes conversation and it brings people together from different constituencies as well. Um, so for this commission, um, there were four artists selected, which has also allowed us an opportunity to allow for the diverse constituencies of Homewood's community, community to be represented in the park. Um, as the um, members of Homewood Community Sports mentioned, you know, there there is a football field, but there are also, it is a public park. Um, and so it's really fortunate that we've have of the four pieces in the in the park, there are two pieces dedicated exclusively to the football team. And so throughout the community engagement process, we went to football games, we met with different community members. And so, and we also met with also community members beyond the football team as well. And so also had really um, an opportunity to receive letters of support from the Legacy Arts Project, um, which is also really specifically invested in the Homewood community and advancing Africana wellness through the arts. And Legacy Arts was also really excited about, you know, the amphitheater space that is located, that is located in um, on the field and thinking about, okay, how are we also advancing Africana wellness and bringing in aspects of African cosmology and spirituality into the space as well. So one of the letters of support that I received was from Legacy, the Legacy Arts Project. I also received a, leg a letter of support from Bible Center Church, where I have done work with the Makers Clubhouse, where I've done youth workshops, um, where, they've, where I've taught them about my artistic process. And so many of the youth who in middle school students who I've worked with as part of that kind of ongoing community engagement with Makers Clubhouse would be the children using the playground space that you see here. Um, I also received a letter of support from the Greater Pittsburgh Arts Project as well. Um, also thinking about where are locations where they might do activations in the larger park as well. And so it's been really thinking about the larger the larger space and thinking about the park as a complex that includes athletic facilities, but also includes spaces for the arts and spiritual organizations as well. Um, and so it's definitely been a really exciting opportunity to think about, okay, you know, we all have we have this new space and this new opportunity. We have four artists. You know, two, we have two pieces that are dedicated exclusively to the to to the football team. How are we also bringing in and engaging the wider Homewood community? And so, have really been um, fortunate to also engage with some of the arts and spiritual organizations in a wider community engagement effort. And I would also mention that the actual location of my piece is actually not even visible from the field. And when you actually look at a three-dimensional view, when people actually enter the field, they actually enter behind my piece. So you actually you actually can't even go in, you can't even see my piece as you actually enter into the space. 
Um, and actually, as you watch the games, there's actually this high fence that actually obscures it. So you actually do not even see or interact with the artwork at all. And so was really thinking about that engagement with the amphitheater space. How are the the um, arts and community organizations in Homewood also using and activating um, activating the larger park? And was really fortunate to also receive um, three letters of support from these additional community groups. Thank you, Mikhail. Um, are there any other follow-up questions from the commissioners? Hi, this is Commissioner Martinez. I have a follow-up question for Mikhail. Um, can you talk more about the in-person meeting? My notes that seems to be a repeated cause of concern that there had been a conversation and then it, um, according to public comment, had not been addressed. Yeah, so we've had an ongoing community engagement effort. Um, the actual rounds of design have actually included multiple rounds of design. So actually in the first round of design, which was um, co-created with Homewood Community Sports, I actually proposed an artwork that was of of athletes um, and actually did an entirely different piece that was of af the of, of athletes. Um, and that was then the feedback that I received from that was that, no, we don't want anything of a specific athletic figure. We want something to be actually a general, a general piece dedicated to the community that is not specific athletes or representing athletes. So it's a kind of a general community space of community engagement. Um, and so that's what also led to a complete redesign to create the current artwork that we had. Also really speaking specifically about also using the research I've done into African cosmological traditions to engage and include symbols that represent love and community. And so these also work on kind of like the spiritual aspects of the work as well. Um, we did have the development activities meeting um, in November um, where there were concerns around the placement of the artwork. And so it was also, you know, had an opportunity, you know, having an opportunity now to also really explain that the artwork is not on the football field. It is not visible on the football field. And that's also why there's been a wider array of community of community support that has also included, as I mentioned, Legacy Arts, but also First, um, First Lady Michelle Ganey as well. Okay, any other follow-up uh, questions from the commissioners? I don't have a follow-up question, but I do want to thank everyone for the input. I want to thank the community for being really clear about its feedback, as well as its support of Mikel as an artist, um, even in the midst of providing critique to the artwork and stating um, you know, where the community stands. And I also, also want to appreciate Commissioner Annalise. I wasn't aware of some of the, uh, you know, original in-person meetings. So this context is really helpful for me in this, my first meeting. Um, and so I just really wanted to acknowledge that this exchange is critical. And I also want to say that I've read the messages in the open comments and heard the responses um, and also have, you know, appreciate Mikkel's input and feedback, um, but wanted to make sure that the community understands that we are all at different stages of learning about this, although I've been aware of this remodel for some time in, in the community. So thank you for the feedback that was very clear. One of the things that I have concerns, I, uh, fellow commissioners, concerns I have is that it sounds as though um, that seems to be the, the most sticky piece is the artwork. Um, but it concerns me that Mikhail made an attempt to give them what they wanted, but that didn't make it through either. And then he redesigned based on the wishes of the community. So at this conjecture, I'm feeling like I'm not sure that if it goes back to the community, because I think my immediate thought was maybe it goes back and, and we retool it or tweak it or something. I'm not certain we'll get much of a different outcome. So I'd like to hear from the commissioners what your thoughts are on moving forward, um, given what we've heard and, 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 you know, so far from, you know, the entire project, on the entire project, please. Well, one, I think, one, I want to say, Commissioner Christine, I think that it's not a, you know, going back and forth. I think we all remain in this process. The voice of community has to remain at the table. The voice of the artist has to remain on the table. And it's something that can't move forward until we kind of have a clearer 
um, understanding, in my opinion, um, and more context. I don't think asking Mikkel to totally, as an artist, turn over anything he would naturally design is the answer. But at the same time, I'm sure as commissioners, we understand we also cannot place you know, disregard kind of feedback from community in the process. So I'm new to the process here. I'm not sure of the next step forward, but I do want to state that, you know, it's it's critical that we all remain at the table, that we're hearing the feedback, um, and particularly because it's so resounding around one aspect and not around the others. Um, I think it, it would be different if it was about everything. Right. So I think there's a way we have to just continue to talk about it. And I look to some of the commissioners who've been uh, working on this longer for some suggestions about uh, different ways forward. OK, I appreciate that, um, Commissioner McGill. I think that's exactly the kind of response I was looking for. So uh, Commissioner Martinez, any thoughts? Anthony will help me with the correct term that we use, but we can we can say no to the project moving forward and have the project come back with <clears throat> revision or commentary the next month. Isn't that correct, Tony? Yes, well, a continuance is generally for not enough information. We, you know, denial sounds like a harsh word, but we try to make it not be harsh in this context because you know it can be a denial with the, the ask for this or that revision and mm -hmm. then the project can come back um if it's a continuance that's generally for we just really don't have enough information here and we want you to supply more if there's something being reworked about the project it would fall under denial but a denial with uh the conditions under which it would come back Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would determine that it's only fair to provide Mikhail with the opportunity to think and feel. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, just a real quick, Commissioners. Uh, so yes, Kevin. The entire project is brought before the Commission, and that entire project includes four components. It, there's not individual components that would be approved or denied or continued. It'd be the entire project. So we're not bringing four projects before the commission. We'll bring one project. Okay, I'm, right. Kevin, that makes sense. But I guess my question then back to you is, I, I say what you're saying about the whole. So if we deny, if we were to deny the whole project, the people, the artists that did the other parts that weren't as much um, being getting pushed back on, they wouldn't necessarily have to redesign. It could still be one component of it, even though the, the whole was denied. Is that correct? Uh, correct. So with the denial, um, denials will be made with clarification as to which criteria, if any, the applicant may address in order for the project to seek future approval is out of the um, manual. Okay. Uh, very quickly, were there any other comments from commissioners or staff even based on the past situations of this kind. My motion wouldn't be for a denial of the project. My motion would be, I would motion for a continuance um, so that those who commissioners included who need a little bit more information and an opportunity um, to review would have that time um, to this particular project. I don't think a denial is where any of us stand on the project. So I think to say it's denied also sends a, a different message to community as well about the way in which projects advance in neighborhoods that need this type of project. So I, I if it is, um, if there are not additional questions, I would just move for a continuance um, okay. to be brought back to the next meeting. Yeah, Kevin, can we have clarification on that again? Because it sounded to you, it sounded as if we had to make a denial to get to, you know, uh, so a, a, a retooling and a continuance was a different animal. So could you please uh, yeah, restate so, that for us? Sure. For a continuance, um, the project is, is neither approved nor denied. Uh, the applicants are asked to return to a future hearing in accordance with our procedures. Uh, motions for continuance shall be made with clarification of what additional information is required in order to make a decision. Um, and then finally, um, 
there's a continuance once. Um, so. Okay, so the uh, ask for a continuance, would that include said additional information? Does that include additional, uh, like con uh, tweaking on designs or any other alteration to the, to the original request? You know what I'm saying? Information is different than changing the, the project or, or tweaking it. I think that's I think the Kevin? specific yeah. motion would be open for no. commissioner mm -hmm. discussion. No, no, that's a specific question to you, Kevin. When oh, you I mean, were saying that, yeah, when you were saying that um, uh, that a continuance meant getting additional information. So my question is, additional information and changing the project are two different things. So additional information might be, we want to hear more about the process that happened when you made, you know, when you put this project together. Whereas, can we say that we want additional information and a, you know, a, a, a new drawing or something like that? Is that part of a continuance, if that makes it more clear? Or are we just asking for more time to learn more? If I may, I'm going to put a motion on the table for a continuance for the purpose of gaining additional information about previous feedback regarding the artistic work included in the project for the field with the intention of being able to advance the project wants clarity around some of the feedback and its manifestation in the artwork is more clear to all of the commissioners. That's my motion. Okay, Sean, and I would only push back a little bit on that and say, I think we may end up back in the same place if we don't address the actual design. But I am willing to grant the continuance. You said we get a continuance once we would still have an opportunity to move the project forward, Kevin, um, even if it were to go to a denial, if we have, can we have both? Can we have the continuance and the denial if we need to move to that step? Hopefully it will factor itself, all, itself out in the continuance, but if it does not, would the project be able to come back a third time? So the Kevin, commission can offer one continuance, but then at the yes. next hearing, um, a decision must be made to approve or deny. I, I have additional practical okay. questions with respect to the artists that are communicating in the chat. And I am concerned that there are individual contracts and that agreements with contractors have already been brokered. Why is that happening before approval? Um, I don't think that agreements with contractors have necessarily been brokered. I mean, there was the 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 kind of work necessary to get to this stage, for instance, Juliandra contacting a contractor, figuring out what the what the mechanics of this installation are, and then work working with DPW to determine when along the the process that's going to be feasible. So there's not, you know, per se any deadlines or I mean any like we're doing this thing on this date. Um but there has been outreach to contractors. Juliandra's piece in particular is would be handled sooner than the others because it is it would be implemented kind of during construction as opposed to kind of following the majority. I understand so that, that would be that... more of a that would be more of a spring implementation. Thank you, Tony. That makes more sense. And it is critical that that things haven't been papered. That's important. Okay, so, I, so my um, thoughts at this point are, if we are going to grant a continuance, let's be clear about what we're granting the continuance for. So it is for what? Uh, 
Commissioner McGill, you mentioned something about a process for community. Yes, it's McDill. I'm sorry, D, not sorry. a D. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner um, McDill, so, your so, recommendation. So my recommend, so first of all, I have a question, but there is a, a motion on the floor. Um, but I will say my question is, again, like Annalise, to the, to the questions I'm seeing in the chat from artists and from other people. Um, and I just want to make sure I heard this correctly. Even though the individual artists are, because I see Derek Tillman mentioned, even though individual artists were contracted separately, this passes, you're saying this passes as one project and want certain pieces cannot be approved and move forward without the entire project being approved. Am I hearing that correctly? Well, yeah, we're bringing this as one project because it is one, you know, associated project. So in a comparison, maybe if you're doing a structure, you may have a contract with an architect, a mechanical engineer, structural engineer, and, um, you know, a plumbing engineer, right? So you have separate contracts with separate um, components of that project, but it's still that single project. And the timeline for this project for its completion, um, because we're saying the deadline, it has to do with trying to get it in on time before seasonal ability to install, not necessarily a timeline for a special community event or something that was meant, it was meant to launch. Is that correct? correct? Yeah, I think, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I think we can, Director Hornstein, um, is there, are you familiar with the construction timeline for the, I guess, the the entire project? Um, yeah, in its entirety, um, it, it, it's substantial. I think, um, you know, to that end, I think there is, you know, some time to consider there for, uh, on a, on a continuance. Um, I want to point a clarity on the contracting situation so that the public is kind of aware. Yes, there are four individual contracts for the construction of this park. Um, those are the contracts that are in public works purview on the issue of public art. Um, you know, I cannot speak to whether or not any of the, those contracts have actually been awarded. Um, you know, however, um, you know, any artist. Um, that has made it to this stage we you know we give them the ability to coordinate with us um, on their installation um, because i think as some of the artists noticed and some of their work it really does it really is a matter of of timing um so you know the I, I think the procedural thing as kevin noted is this is brought to you as one public art project right. um, and that is where it is, sits and it doesn't um you know the their ability to execute that contract on approval um that is outside of the purview of the construction contract but we you know we include them in the coordination because there's material details that they need to understand um in order to um, effectively install their proposed art okay thanks thank you for that so um hmm uh just quickly um Commissioner Martinez, you didn't say anything. I didn't hear anything hard from you on continuing uh, versus another option. Could you please give me your feedback on that? No, I, I second I second the motion for a continuance. Okay. All right then, uh, Commissioner McGill, would you then make a, again make a formal motion? Um, it can be seconded and then we go ahead and do roll call to make that action. Absolutely. And I will try to make it inclusive of what you're asking for, which is the what we're continuing for. I will do my best. So, the, I, so, so I am making a motion for a continuance of the project so that there can be one more information provided to new commissioners about the former process with regard to the development of all the artwork pieces um, that are, are, are comprised in the, in the work and also get to a place, honestly, of some sort of agreement by talking to Mikkel and considering the feedback that we've received from community so that we can return to the next meeting with the hope to be able to advance the, pro the project and move it towards installation. 
Okay, thank you, Commissioner McGill. Can we have a second on that motion? I'll support Commissioner McDill's motion for continuance. Okay, very good. And we have a quick question from an artist that says, that says, do all the artists have to be present at the next meeting? So Can you staff so answer that for me quickly? Well, I guess to get some clarification on this. So there's no commentary um, kind of outstanding for Cameron, Juliandra, Naja in terms of the continuance contained in this. Okay, so um, presumably, I guess we could say that the, the commission review of those components is kind of complete. Okay, all right, thank you, Tony. Is I that, think that, yes. that yeah. Was, okay. yeah, that was helpful. Um, okay. Thank you, Commissioner McGill for bringing in also the sensitivity of, of new commissioners. And I think even with our older commissioners that that same information would be uh, helpful as well. So we've had a motion, we've had a second. Uh, Tony, can you do a, a roll call for approval of that um, of that extension? Sure thing. Uh, Bethia? Aye. Martinez? Aye. And McDill? Aye. Okay. All right, the action has been approved. And um, Tony, uh, I suppose at this point we can convene and move forward uh, with our time now at 328 um, with the director's report. Yep. Yes. So, Mikhail, no whenever you are ready. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Tony. Oh, no report. Kevin. No report. Okay, no report. Okay, very good. Um, is there any other action that needs to be taken at this meeting? Nope, that is the end of the agenda. Okay, excellent then everyone, thank you. And I am definitely looking forward to uh, the additional information that we get so that we can move forward with the project because it is an exciting project. Mikhail is an excellent artist and I'm sure we can get this sorted out. Uh, at some point. And I thank everyone for their time and also thank the community for your input. It was heard and felt. We appreciate you. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and then um, adjourn the meeting for today if there's no other further business. Okay. Thank you, commissioners. Okay. Thank you all.
Commissioner Abdullah, were you the one who was asking about 837 and the railroad bridge? Yes. I sent that to my bridge team and we had received a couple 311s on it. So we have alerted Norfolk Southern about that. Okay. Thanks so much. That was uh, faster than I expected. Well, they checked the 311 history and it sounds like some other folks had had raised the concern. So we had already received those and sent them on to the railroad directly. No, I'm just saying your feedback. Even oh. though I, you were saying people inquired about it. I wasn't expecting to hear anything about it today. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, looks like we have everybody we need here. So, uh, Commissioner Ziegler, if you want to get started. Absolutely. And you'll have to refresh my memory if I miss anything. Uh, I called the Civic Design Commission meeting on January 24th, 2024 to order. We'll proceed with roll call. Uh, Ziegler? Present. Abdullah? Present. Carver? Present. Winston? Present. Okay. Uh, right there. Moving on to the uh, approval of the commission yeah. meeting from the November commission meeting. You see the other way around. <laughs> Were there any comments? May I get a move to approve the minutes? I'll motion. I'll second. Is there a second? All right. Roll call for that approval. Ziegler? Aye. Abdullah? Uh, I, I didn't really, is this the, is this all the minutes here? Uh, it's the minutes from November. I wasn't, 20, I, wasn't I wasn't there. I oh, you said from November. I think I wasn't there. Um, if you, you can abstain if you want. Yeah, I'll to. abstain for now. Okay. Uh, Carver. Aye. Winston. Aye. Uh, moving on to correspondence. I don't, Tony, there weren't any for this one, correct, for us. It was for our commission only. Right. There was no commission sent to the Civic Design Committee this month. Great. And then do we need to talk, discuss anything about the over-counter reviews? Those are just for, as an FYI, correct? The what? I, I apologize. Sorry. The OTC for the Whiteman Park. Oh, yeah. That's events. that's just FYI for the commission. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was nothing in briefing this month. So nope. we will move to hearing in action. Uh, the first project is a fire station 20 and medic 12 construction. With the applicant being DPW. Yes. Mary, you should be able to unmute. Do you need anyone else with you to present? Um, well, um, I thought that James was supposed to be involved here, but I don't see him on here. James um, Lennon? James Lennon, yes. Yeah, I can promote him. All right, thank you. All right, he should be able to join you and you can uh, give your introduction. Great, hello everybody. Um, thanks for having me here. Uh, this project, Fire Station 20 Medic 12, is a relocation of a current um, uh, fire medic station from Hayes to Lincoln Place. Um, this went before the Art Commission for a um, conceptual, which it was approved. 
At that time, the only comments that the commission had was that they wanted to see us develop the whole site, which is both out of the um, out of the budget and, and not in anybody's scope. Um, so we are really here just for this new station. We're presently finishing up construction documents in preparation to um, submit for zoning and um, PLI permits. So that is, we could stop at those two are show what the building is going to look like. It's situated um, in a small portion of a seven acre site with um, emergency egress happening onto Mifflin Road. It is for um, police, I mean not police, uh, fire, uh, emergency medical services. And then there is a small portion in the corner of the building that has been set aside for community use. I'm not sure what else you need to know about this. I have a question. Um, so when is uh, the proposed construction and when is the co proposed completion? So uh, we plan on uh, being under construction next year, 2025. Um, we're looking at about a 24 month construction schedule for 2027. Thank you. Uh, you, in the write-up, it said that this is meeting passive health standards. Can you speak to some of the design features uh, that are playing into um, just meeting that standard for the, the city and just a little bit more about the project? Sure, absolutely. For that, I will call on uh, James, who is the architect on the project, to speak a little bit more to the passive house. Hey, everyone. Yeah, so uh, this project was designed with passive house standards in mind. Um, the, the exterior wall construction is much thicker and um, uh, contains much more insulation than a, a typical building might have. Um, we also try to mitigate, there's uh, uh, different principles when it comes to the passive house design, including uh, air barrier, vapor barrier, water infiltration, and then of course your thermal barrier. So. Um, Upgrading each of those to maintain the passive house design and, and uh, uh, looking at building orientation, as well as um, uh, keeping this building functional for a fire station was all considered uh, throughout the design, design process. Uh, so I have a, uh, another question. So uh, it, has there been any consideration in regards to this project uh, as far as like the development or the fact that I guess recently, I don't know how many people are aware, but that uh, a number of uh, houses like their foundations like were compromised because uh, much of this space uh, sits on top of an uh, um, old coal mine. And yeah, it, I mean, it's yeah. a good question. There's significant undermining on the site. Um, we situated ours on a portion of it that isn't. Um, there will be a great deal of saturation grouting that will need to occur um, for the foundation in order for it to work. Um, it's part of the reason why the rest of the site that was supposed to be developed by the URA who pulled out because of the costs of um, um, doing that, un that saturation grouting and uh, to fill the undermining. So that is a big part of this project. Okay. Another reason why the costs are very high. <laughs> Thank you. In looking at the previous commission's comments, it looked like they were requesting additional um, consideration for pedestrian access. However, it doesn't look like the design has changed significantly since the conceptual application. Can you speak to, to that? So for the project, we will be working with, Domi is responsible for right of way. And so Domi will be taking um, taking over the, the sidewalk that will go from our property um, to, I guess, the gas station. Um, there is no sidewalk on the other side. Um, that's not our property. 
and we will be responsible for completing the sidewalk that is access from our property. So we'll work in conjunction with Domi on that one. And a lot of a lot of the sidewalks don't show in uh, some of these 3D views, but in the site plan that you do have up there, um, it should show where that that sidewalk is located and how it interacts with the site, comes down and then uh, across the front of the building uh, to the front entrance. Great, thank you. And one of, yep, sure. Uh, I have an additional question. It's showing solar panels on the roof. Is that going part of the project? So all projects that we that DPW does, especially the new ones, uh, we're required to be net zero, net zero ready. Um, the solar panels are just showing that the project is being um, designed and built to accept solar panels. We don't at the at this time do them ourselves. Um, we're looking for third party but it can accept them is the way that that will work. Are there any other questions? Okay, one more question. Uh, this would be for, I guess, Joan. Can you confirm that y'all are going to be um, that al aligning the budget for the sidewalk access for the property? Sorry, you were breaking up a little bit. Was that a question for Domi? Yeah, I'm sorry, Kim. Uh, I mean, um, Director Lucas, <laughs> if, could you confirm? <laughs> could you confirm that uh, y'all are going to um, put? the budget for the sidewalk as part of this project? I'll have to check with the department. Claire, would you mind um, sharing who you're working with with Domi so I can confirm with them? I'd have to, yeah, I'd have to go back through my notes and figure that out. Um, the expected completion isn't until 2027, which is when you would do this. Um, was it, it might've been Angie? I was talking with about this. Okay, so I, that's something that I can um, check within the department, but probably can't get a quick answer while we're on this meeting about. Is there, um, sorry, one more question. Um, I think in the site plan, it shows uh, fencing uh, surrounding the, the property. However, I don't see it in the proposed materials um, portion. Can you speak to the appearance of that, please? Yeah, so that actually is not fencing. You're talking about the uh, the line that goes along the left side where we have the retention pond across the north. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is that is actually a guardrail um, just so vehicles don't I fall see. down the hill if okay. there's an accident or something. Yeah. Thank you. Mm hmm Claire, is this... Um site receive a um emergency generator yes it is where is that located on the plan that is plan north plan. and there yeah plan north on the right side of the oh, screen okay, here. yeah yep and there is a uh screen around the generator itself
Can you also speak to the proposed plantings? I see some trees, but no description. Yeah, so I believe that, so all of the trees on the southern side along Mif Mifflin Road, um, those are going to be street trees for the most part that uh, meet the, the city's requirements mm -hmm. um, and what species that they typically occur, or I'm sorry, typically require, excuse me. And then within the lawn area, adjacent to the garage doors. Um, I believe those are the same. Let me see okay. if I can uh, get a quick answer for you on that one here. Yeah, so the trees in the front. I don't have exact information on what that okay. those trees are, but we can provide that if you guys need it. I have it somewhere. It's just okay. uh, in front problem. at this minute. Any other questions or comments? Um, the only other, the only thing I would comment, additional comment is I'm um, surprised this is coming from the commission now for hearing an action without construction drawings. Um, but that would be my only other comment. I'm sorry, I didn't understand the, what it was. You were breaking up a little bit. I apologize. Uh, I was. Um, I was curious why you're coming to hearing in action when the full construction drawings are not ready. When the whole construction documents are, I'm sorry. I think Megan said that she was asking um, or, or, or stating that they weren't complete, maybe. They're Is that complete. What you're They are complete, but Correct. we did. We don't. I. We do not provide um, any drawings of buildings for the public, general public, for public safety buildings. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Is there another? Is there a second? A second. I'm sorry, I actually did not get the motion. For, it was at a motion for approval, and and who was that from? I, I, I heard Commissioner Winston second, but I did not hear what happened before that. Actually, I think that was me who second, um, uh, uh, Commissioner Abdullah. But oh, I, I thought it was a mission for uh, a, a motion for approval. I thought it was. 
Yeah, who who made the motion for approval? Commissioner Winston, I believe. Okay, thank you. Sorry. I didn't have everybody everybody's faces up on my screen and I yeah. No, I, th I think that was uh Abdullah um Commissioner Abdullah who um initially I I just just I guess um as we discussed um I had to recuse myself for this particular um vote because of my current contract with the city but um I think okay. it was Abdullah I didn't um, I didn't propose I didn't propose okay. a motion. No no motions on the no motions on the table. Someone has to motion to yeah. approve. <laughs> And that uh, Commissioner Winston is recused from this yeah. review. I will make a motion to approve as presented. And I'll second that motion. All right, got it. Okay. All right, roll call for that approval. Ziegler. Aye. Abdullah. Aye. Carver. Aye. Winston abstains or is recused. All right. What passes? Thank you. Claire. Thank you, everybody. Do I need to call this to close, Tim? Or is there more? Um, now we, uh, the agenda list uh, director's report, I do not believe we have one. No report. So uh, you're free to adjourn, Commissioner Ziegler. Sorry. A uh, motion to uh, call this meeting of Civic Design Commission to a close. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you all. You.